Oh, that's good. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Akemi, also known as Akemi Kun Cosplay, and today we are going to be making something from the Spider Verse. Now, if you're anything like me and you love Spider Man, you may have recently seen the latest movie in the Spider Verse trilogy. And if your tastes are similar to mine, then you might have left that movie theater obsessed with one character in particular. Sorry, Miguel. I was not talking about you. I am talking about Hobie or Spider Punk. So Hobie Brown was definitely the coolest character in the Spider-Verse movie. We can all agree. And more than anything, I want to cosplay him. So bad. <laughs> Apparently, it took the animation team three years just to animate his scenes and get the style right, which is absolutely insane. But unfortunately, because of all the madness of his cool clip-out art style, it was very hard to gather references for exactly what his costume and his guitar looked like. That is, until I found a very talented artist named Jake Panian, I hope I'm saying that right, on Instagram, who uploaded some beautiful references of both Spider-Punk and his guitar from the Spider-Verse movie. Thank you so much, Jake. You are a godsend. So now with clear references in hand, I am much more confident to tackle this project. Now this is going to be a tutorial video, but it's also going to be a little bit of a speed build on my end because um, Anime Expo is coming up in less than a month. And I really should be working on those costumes that I actually have obligations for. But I need to get this hyperfixation out of my brain. If I don't do it now, it's going to be bugging me for the rest of the year. So with that in mind, let's do it. After conducting some intensive research, I figured out how long I wanted it to be. Grab Jake's art to use as reference, scaled it up in Adobe Acrobat, and then printed out all the pieces. Once those were printed, I taped them all together. And there I had my two scale pattern. But I'm bad at math, unfortunately, so it ended up being two inches too big. But oh well, close enough. I then cut out my entire pattern, just so that I could check the scale up against my body to see if I liked it. And looks pretty good. I honestly like to err on the side of a little bit too big than having my prop be too small. Now it's time to cut my pattern into three usable parts, consisting of the body, the neck, and the top. Sorry, I don't know proper guitar terms, so I'm going to butcher it. For the base, I used an inch and a half thick foam board. Uh, you don't need a board this big, this is just what I had on hand. And grabbing my pattern, I traced it out. Once that was done, it was time to cut it. Uh, grabbing a safety glove because I don't trust myself. I began hacking away at the foam. Just be careful when you're using a hobby knife to cut things this thick, hence the safety glove. And once that was done, I noticed I did a terrible job. It looks like Miguel clawed at the edge of this, honestly. So I took my hobby knife and used it to clean up the rough cuts. For the neck, I cut it out, out of one inch foam board. And then cut the top out of one inch foam board as well. Once all three pieces were cut out, it was time to sand them smooth. Grabbing some gloves and a respirator. I took my pieces and cleaned up these nasty scrungly marks with some sandpaper. And this is why we wear a respirator. <laughs> you do not want this pink dust in your lungs. Trust me. The coffee's probably not a good sign. Once the sides were sanded, I also went ahead and added a beveled edge as well. Just to make it look pretty.
for the back of the neck, it needs to have a nice curve to it. So I hacked away any excess with a hobby knife and then sanded everything nice and round. I also gave the top of the guitar some TLC too. Now to attach all three pieces, I had some sticks lying around. So I went ahead and drilled a hole into the top of the base, the bottom of the neck, Filled said holes with copious amounts of hot glue. Can you stop talking about your holes? And then inserted my random stick. I also did this to the neck and the top as well. And doesn't look too shabby. It's extremely lightweight, which I like. Now to permanently join the three pieces, I'm going to use some foam clay. Grabbing chunks of it, I simply squish it into the seams and with the help of a wet finger, sculpted it into shape. Tried to add a nice little curve, kind of like how you would see on an actual guitar. I also did the same method with the top. And I added a little bit to the front too, just for some extra support. Once that was dry, it was time to add some quick seal into all of the imperfections. I don't know where these holes came from, I'm assuming Miguel took a chomp out of it when I wasn't looking. But Quick Seal is a really nice water-based caulking material, which dries clear and adds a nice rubbery finish. It's super easy to work with and can be smoothed out with just a wet finger, so it's perfect for filling any cracks or holes. Now to the details. I tape back together my pattern to get a clear reference for the neck. Once that was done, I went ahead and traced it out onto 2mm EVA foam. After said piece was cut out, I used a little bit of spray adhesive to one side. And then once that was nice and tacky, I glued it down to the base. Now it's time to cut out the rest of these details, um, frets, dials, uh, I'm not sure. So I always call it a goober. Once all the little details were cut out, I used the main base of the pattern to trace out where they would sit on the guitar, just so I don't have to do any guesswork later. I also went ahead and trimmed off the excess on the neck too. Now grabbing some random foam scraps, pens, and a nice blade, I went ahead and I started cutting out all the details. Now Hobie's guitar is pretty organic and all over the place honestly, so I was using a blend of 2, 4, 6, and 8mm foam and just kind of mixing them together with whatever kind of felt right. Using my favorite contact cement, I used this to glue together any pieces that had multiple layers. Throughout this process, I made sure to keep my blade nice and sharp in between cuts, just so that there was less cleanup work to do later on. Once all the pieces were cut out, it was time to dremel them nice and smooth. I gave everything a nice rounded edge and a little beveled edge on top of it. Looks pretty good. Now make sure that you're working with a very very steady hand with pieces this small because you don't want your dremel to slip and mess up your thumbs. I would know. Using the tip of the dremel, I pushed it into each of the foam pieces to create a little rivet. A neat trick. I then repeated this step for all of the dials and round pieces. Once all the foam pieces were sanded nice and smooth, it was time to heat seal them with a heat gun. They were then all glued on with the same spray adhesive from earlier. For the little bit that holds the guitar strings, I just grabbed a little popsicle stick and glued it into place with some super glue. 
I then took a tiny bit of foam clay and then just sculpted it on top for some extra detail. Now for the bars on the neck, I needed to mark out where each of them was going to sit. So I took a silver sharpie and roughly marked out where I wanted each of them. I then took a ruler to connect all of my lines so I had a nice clear pattern. And then taking a half moon 2 millimeter dowel, I sprayed it in spray adhesive and glued each bit down and trimmed off the excess. I made these little extra details on the top off camera, but they're just made out of some more foam bits and some toothpicks. To mark where they were going to sit, I grabbed my pattern again, and then just used a hobby knife to stab exactly where they were going to go. Less guesswork in the end. I glued each of the pieces individually with some more spray adhesive. And for the little twisty bits, I covered the toothpick ends in some wood glue and just stabbed them into the side. Very professional. Right, no, of course. After all that work, it's finally time for priming. I grabbed a nasty old brush and some black flex bond and unceremoniously started spreading it around. <laughs> Now there is a method to my messy madness here. I'm purposely making it kind of thick and sloppy because Hobie's guitar has this very painted brush stroke texture to it. And I want that to kind of show through my paint job in the end. Like I said, a method to the messy madness. And then three coats later, and this is what it looks like. Nice and very, very textured. Now it's finally time to paint. Now I was kind of guessing on which layers went on top of which, but I decided to start with this light green color. Once that was all mixed up, I took a rough brush and started slapping on the color. Now I'm trying to be pretty deliberate with my strokes and making sure that they all kind of go in the same direction. I'm also looking back at the reference constantly. Now you'll also see me jumping around from place to place on the guitar from here on out, and that's because I was a little bit in a rush, and while one section was drying, I would move on to another section to paint. I don't believe in consistency. Now while the neck of the guitar was drying, I went back to the bass. Thankfully I had a nice shade of red and didn't have to mix anything custom and I started slapping that down. Again, there's a method to the madness here, I swear. But basically, I use different pressures, strokes, even dab the brush in some places, just to kind of get that very messy, vintage looking effect. Oh yeah, don't forget the sides. For all of the metal pieces on the guitar, I used some silver rub and buff. Rub and buff is a really neat wax based paint, and a little goes a long way, so I only needed a tiny bit, and I just applied it with a little q tip. I also went ahead and applied it to the bars as well. And these little doodads. I also mixed up a rust base color and applied it with a chip brush to all of the little metal bits. For the neck of the guitar, I made sure to use long continuous strokes. This way, when the paint dries, it will kind of have a wood-like texture. And we can't forget about the back of the guitar too. Again, I'm being very decisive with my strokes here using various pressures, dabs, and kind of letting the primer that I've textured underneath to give some more detail to it. 
I also went back over the neck with some darker shades to help improve the wood-like effect. And I also added some grays and browns to the guitar as well. Now it's time for some extra details. I had a little box of baubles lying around that had these perfect little silver rivets in them. Once I laid them all out where I wanted, I just used some super glue to keep them in place. There are some rivets up here on the, the silver thingies as well. So I just grabbed some random sizes and glued them into place. Again, this whole guitar is pretty organic and messy, so I'm not really too concerned with keeping things straight. And here is the finished base. But now, it's time for the fun part. I took the sticker references from Jake's art on Instagram and scaled them up to the proper size. There were some missing though, so I had to go ahead and design my own. Oh god. This might be the most cursed thing I've drawn. Ever. I was gonna try ignoring you. I then printed out the stickers onto matte white sticker paper and cut some of them out on my circuit cutter. And there you go. These look so cool. I was just cool the whole time. I started to peel them and slap them down into place. Again, keeping a close eye on my reference to make sure I get it as close as possible. I'm not a perfectionist, but, you know, we strive for it. And don't forget about the back. Minus a couple missing, this looks pretty good. Now it was time to add some sketchy detail. I used a copious amount of different markers, sharpies, and inks to create certain scratches, lines, and any other details. Can't forget about MJ. Again, keeping a close eye on the reference, I went ahead and I just outlined most of the details. But unfortunately, halfway through this process, I realized I got a little ahead of myself and forgot some extra paint. Using the ends of these foam brushes, I dipped them into paint and use them to dab these perfect little circles. Now that that's done, back to sketching. I also outlined all of the details on the neck, including the bars just to add a little bit of extra shadow. And I even added some sketch lines to the back of the neck, too, to help improve that wood-like effect. And after hours and hours of adding all those sketches, I realized I still forgot some details. So I went back in with some more paint. And even added a couple splatters here and there with an old chip brush. Just be careful about where you're splattering, because I ended up making a mess. <laughs> Once the paint was dry, it was time to seal my paint job with some matte clear enamel. And we're all done. Just kidding. I forgot the guitar strings. I grabbed three different sizes of wire and began wrapping it around my popsicle stick from earlier. Now I know guitars are supposed to have six different sizes of guitar strings, but I figured three was close enough. I repeated this process for all of the string. Once all of the strings were in place, I went ahead and bended a few of them into some wacky shapes with a pair of pliers. And then to keep said strings in place, I used some gel super glue and an instant cure spray. This way I don't have to worry about them slipping and sliding everywhere. Ta-da! Here 
is complete. I had legitimately such a fun time painting this. <laughs> I've never um, painted anything in this sketchy style before, so it was a learning experience for sure. I was going cross-eyed practically, looking at the reference constantly, trying to figure out what the hell I was doing, in what particular order, and how many layers, which stickers, and which paint colors went on top of which. I made this in about three days. <laughs> in hindsight, what would I have done differently? If I had the luxury of time, I would have added a dowel right here in the base of the neck. It's not super bendy. The All the layers of paint, flex bond, and the wires help keep it in place more or less. So I don't feel like it's going to snap, but because it's all made out of foam core, it's crazy, crazy light. And I don't think that it's going to break or fall apart anytime soon. <laughs> Another thing I would have done differently is I would have maybe covered the base of the guitar itself in spackling. It's really, really, really hard to see. Unless you're looking at this from a very, very specific angle under certain lighting, the imprint left over from the branding of the pink insulation foam board is actually kind of visible on the back side of this guitar. I don't even think you could see it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know my YouTube channel is still very, very new, so again, any sort of feedback would be extremely helpful. Also, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. We'll roll the glamour shots, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, no,